It's interesting when you think about the state of the world today, nobody would have thought in December of 2019 that we'd be seeing what we're seeing today in the world. People are talking today, actually finally, about the meaning and purpose of other human beings, the value and dignity of other human beings. People are saying things like justice, acting like justice matters. So as crazy as things are right now in the world, it's actually a pretty powerful thing. That we're living in a time right now where people are actually talking about the value and dignity of image bearers of God, that human beings matter at all. You see, we've been so inundated with an opposing worldview for so long, where we're taught that human beings are nothing but other products of evolutionary forces. We're taught that human beings are just descendants of highly evolved societies of bacteria. And now yet, here we have people in the streets talking about things like Black Lives Matter. And they do. Human beings matter a lot. Justice matters a lot. And it's, and it's amazing to think about the power of worldview. That when you think about people today who are protesting and talking about social justice, intersectionality, when they're talking about critical race theory and all these neo-Marxist ideologies that have now fully permeated the, the uh, academic institutions and media and our youth, when you think about the power of that worldview and the power of those who hold to liberal ideology and they're promoting these sorts of things that are leading to chaos in the streets, they have a worldview that demands victory. Victory. No compromise. Have you thought about that? Are you seeing it yet? That people with an opposing perspective to the Christian worldview have a worldview and perspective of the future that demands justice, they say, and demands total victory. And they're not willing to compromise. Behind me is a city, Las Vegas. It's a city representative of an opposing worldview in many ways. It's a city that represents an opposing worldview. And how did it get here? How did we get to a place where we have a place that celebrates debauchery, that celebrates fornication. What happens here stays here is the idea. How did this thing get erected? How was it not stopped, at least in terms of all the sinful aspects of it? And the answer is compromise. See, Christians have not had the view of Jesus, the view that he tells you to pray about. Remember, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He tells us to pray that. So Jesus tells the church to pray that the will of the Father would be done here like it is in heaven. And he tells us that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. And he says, go and disciple the nations. Teach them to obey. Jesus had a perspective of the church that's the salt of the earth that preserves it from spoil and decay. And it's the light of the world that scatters the darkness. Jesus had a perspective of the world that seems to be total victory with no compromise, all authority. And Christians in history had that vision of total victory, no compromise. Jesus is the king. His justice counts. How do you know what his justice is? It's right here in his word. Christians have for too long compromised in the area of the authority of Jesus, the gospel, God's righteous standards and all of society and every level. We've compromised, and so we get things like this erected. We've compromised, and so we have mayhem in the streets. We've compromised so people don't understand the real value of life and the dignity of life. They don't understand what justice really is. We've compromised in so many areas, and one in particular is an area that I like to see people that say black lives matter, I like to see them actually join in on this one. What about all the black lives that are slaughtered via abortion? What about all the other lives that are slaughtered via abortion? 62 million dead babies since Roe v. Wade. Sometimes the numbers are about 3,000 babies a day. 1,000 black lives a day, murdered, snuffed out. Where's the justice for them? 
And why are we as Christians compromising on this one? Why do we yield ground to the secularists, the humanists, and to the unbelievers in this area when it comes to justice for the pre-born? It's an important thought. No more compromise. Christians ought to stand for justice because God certainly does. And God commands us to hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter, who are being led to death. Christians need to stop compromising and allowing things like this to be erected and celebrated. If we want justice, we'll stand on God's word and his standards of justice. Go to endabortionnow.com for more.